man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue Your grace 
song I sing You were all alone Yes And you were all
to your throne. Oh, I'll thunder out alone. Cause here in your courts where I'm going to your throne, I found.
Somebody pour your affection on God. 
express your love to him. Kita la la barra re de bobo zialapa. Ibarra di gazumbra kata teleba de zala. There is no method, there is no formula. Whatever you feel to do, do for him. Speak to him. Kipa bada de gazumbra kete telepata. Zore bada de gazumbra kata yala le balubata. E ando le barra bra de gazumbra kata teleparra de gazum. Izobra re katala manto le pade de goze re parade. O re bazumbra katala pade gazumbra re gasha kata. Izumbra de gasala pala talapa. Imbra da gatala ma telepada de gazumbre ke telepa. Rata ye bazumbra katala de ba de gatolapa. Eri gazumbre ke telepa la de gazumbra gatata. Shira raba zombre ketele payada zombre kete Ereba atada azambra de gatalapa I pour my love on you Lord Mara de gazombre ketele pa O seye ketele ketete telepada O ribada da zombra katalada ba de gazombra kata Isha tata talaman talapra de garaba da gazo Riba zombra kataleba de gazo reba la le kata Thank him for his goodness Thank him for his mercies. Thank him for his grace. Ibarra de gatole panda gatala pata tala palade. Ikamra de gatole paya de gazombre ketete. Ezobra de gazanta la paya katole parada. Obra de gazore kataya tala manto brade. Izara da da bazombre ketele pada do bagata. Ima shamra gatala paya tala katala palade. Ya rabada da zombra gata la pada de gabro do gosata Esa ya la para de gazombre re gato Ia pa uti bada de gazombra ye Isha la tanda zia mana koti abada Ire ke embra ye, embra ye, embra ye, embra ye, embra ye da do baza Iranda da bazombre ke telebo E e ya pa a zombra ta 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 la Iza rada de gazomba kaka pa ta la pa Eya randa gadu bozala di osepa kaata i ambali gadu goto ezale malu ombre etele baata ezambre esi ansombra teke eke keke barada da bazombra le kata e papa kata e barada bazande le pa e re bazombra le ato bada gazombra i sayata anu i zara le kata i amata talapa. Mighty God, Matalama, Imbra de Gata Telepaya, Imbatalama de Gete, E de Gete Gete, Isombra da Gata, E Patala Payata, Imbra da 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 bada, Isombra te Gete, O Sapatalama, Imbra de Gata Lapa, Imbra le Gato Lobodo, Isoya, E Satanda da, Isombra da Gata, E Patada da ye, Imbra da da Gata. Mata da di bada, o se bra de gata, o sama ta ta la pa, embra te da bade, o pa ya ta ta, o salan, o satan de ke, o bra de gato le pa, imbra de gata de ke te, a sala pa la bra de, o bra de gata la ma, o bra ta ata nde, o si ama o, e ka ata ya, o ba ala, o si bra de ka, o lembro de, o si pa ka, if you are sick in your body. Do something you could not do. Irada da bazombra. If you came with a clutch, if you came with a claim, if you came, ipapa kabradega. If you have a broken body, broken parts, ipakata. Iranda zombra. Ekaya tatalama. Ibado zembrete. Swellings are disappearing. Ipata la parada. Iraba digato. Blood pressure is healing. Diabetes is restoring. Aya ra 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 ba. Izo ba talama. O kapara da da bazo. Ire bra de ga sonde. Ere pa katala pa. Do something you could not do. Rika mana no zele pa. Ire ba zombre kete. Swellings are healing. 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 Riba da da gata. I command those bones. To get in order in line, I karada daba, I zapata lapa. If you came with a pain, it leaves right now, right now, right now. Lymph nodes, your lymph nodes. If you have, you have swellings in your breast, 
Rebala bako predegete Utalapa God is healing you now Iramba zobra katale Ropa zale There's a lady you came with swellings in your breast Iramba zobra kate Katala pradega God is healing you Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now Ida ba zobra kata Back issues e pradega zore bade Zore ke tele matala manta Ika mala zombra ke tele pa Struggle and strife Mere bada gote Eke bada Aye bade I command that disease to leave you Now Ika ta 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 Izo pradegata Ere manda degata Ere ba zombre ke te Re pa sata la pa Ro ba degato la pa Walk Run Leave Re ba zombre ke te I feel the unction to pray for people in diaspora, those that left your nation to go to work. Make a papa talando, zireke e prolegata, ego zele palade, roba zanda lapa. May God establish you, e libra de gazomrekete. May God position you, may He advantage you, may you find supernatural favor. And grace, Ika Pata Talapa. This is your year. This is your year. Ika Bara de Daba. If you know you're in a foreign land, connect to something. Ira Bazomrekete. That touches the inheritance of that nation. Inga Randa do Bada Gazomrekete Lepa. Isola Pacatalama. Robado Zemrekete. O Zara Tata. Zubo Kore Bazala. O Zemra Catalapa. E sombra kata, e yata la paye, ropa zombre kete, omba zombre kete, e ke 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 telepa, reka la badiga, ropa zombra kata, isha la bade, every minister, I'm praying for your ministry, rika pa polegede, ropa diga zombre kete, ile badaga zo, wherever there's been barrenness, struggle, and stale experiences, I decree progress, and I'm moving forward. Ika papalanda brade gata. E sole barade. Zombra gata la. E zombra gata. E re badida zo. Re ba zombra kate. E shada da 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 ba. Ro ba zanda kata. E le payata. E re ba zombre de. Ro ba zombra de ga. O payane le se. Pa shara ba de. Ro ba zombre ke. Kota la ne ze le pa. Roba zombre ke telepa, ira ba zombre ke te, rada da ba zombre ke te, re ba zalamando kopra de, re ke te te te, ese lepa, raba goze ke repa. O raba zombra ka talapa, roba zombre ke telepa, roba zombre ke lepa, e lepa yanda zapalapa, re ka shanta talapa. Roba zombre ke telepa, roba zobra kata, roba zala pala kata, roba zombre ke reba, roba zombre ke lepa, isatane, zobra re kata, ele prade kata, ela manto lepa, ripa zombre ke te, zore ba zombre ke te, roba le kata, ese lepa yando, re ka zombre ke reba, zore ba zala taka, roba ka sakata, Ro ibo gori bazala pa, ro kosi kalanda, zire bazombre kete, e shaya tata, ere bada zombre reke. Thank you Holy Ghost, thank you Holy Ghost. Come on, give him a mighty hand clap of praise, 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 mighty hand clap of praise. Thank you Lord, Hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Choir, thank you very much. I want to pray for somebody, a lady, that recently had an ectopic pregnancy. If you, if it ha... Bring her here. Oh, any, anybody else who is experiencing it in that pain or you had a report like that, in the past month or it has just happened recently come i want to pray for you bring that one as well 
ectopic pregnancy. I hear the Spirit of the Lord tell me to minister to some people. People in the back, kindly take your seats. Kindly take your seats. If you're a lady and you've had an ectopic pregnancy recently, bring that one as well. You bring her, you bring her, you bring her, you bring her, you bring her. How many of you have had, came with pain and it has left? Put up your hand. You came with a pain, a swelling. Uh, come on, wait, stand up. I want people to see what God has just done in these few minutes. See all of those. Stand up, everybody. You came with a pain, you came with a swelling, you came with an ear, ear something. And, and God has just done a miracle for you this evening. Stand up like this and wave. See how many people... Do you see how it is hard to testify in Fanero? Come on, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Put up your hands. C hurry, 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 hurry. You are Alpha and Omega. We I want to put my hands on your heads. Alone. You are free. You're free. To be a free. Go! Spirit of darkness. Go. We give you. Go. Oh. Witchcraft. I command you to leave. Go. 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 <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Bring that woman. To be praised. You're dealing with a spirit of fear. Eh? I see you've been dealing with a very serious spirit of fear. Your spirit of fear. Leave her. Go! In Jesus' name. So much eh? bring her up I need to minister to her bring her on the altar spirit of darkness loose bring her on the altar she's dealing with so much so much The rest of you can go. Today is the day God delivers you for good. In the name of Jesus. Spirits of death. I see shackles on her feet. The devil had put spiritual chains. What's wrong with my mic? Huh? I, I see... Is that a reflection? Uh, uh, uh? I see like uh, chains on her feet. I see bondage on her feet. Bondage. You can put her down. You can put her down. Bondage on her hands. But in the name of Jesus, today is the day God delivers you. God delivers you. Heavenly Father, I bless you. Every trouble that has been frustrating this woman's life today it sees the end the end the end the end the end <laughs> thank you lord thank you jesus thank you lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
She's free. Give us a few minutes. She'll get up. Which is you? In the name of Jesus, I speak deliverance over your life. Power of the Holy Ghost. It's done. It's done. Thank you, Lord. Greet your immediate neighbor. Tell them you are welcome for the service today. And tell them it's going to be a wonderful experience for your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not going to call somebody out, but I feel in my heart that um, there's somebody this evening. <laughs> You're actually on my left side. You're around here. I feel you on my left. <laughs> uh, bring her. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> bring her. Bring her. Quickly, 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 quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's another person you've just prayed a prayer like 10 seconds ago that you're tired of drugs. Somebody just said 10 seconds ago, they said, Father, put that down. Boy. They just said, Father, I'm tired of drugs. That person is being delivered. Somebody is tired of weed. They, 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 say, they just said, God, I'm tired. Take it away. I'm tired of drinking. Take it away. You're never going to, you're never going to put your mouth again on a drink in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can this woman face up? I am the great Jehovah. Power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> great in mercy. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. I see wealth over you. Great wealth. <laughs> <laughs> she has at least two years I see her move I mean God is going to do so much 2024, 2025 they are not going to be able to recognize you thank you Lord hallelujah you're the great Jehovah so tomorrow evening we're going to be here in prayer praise the Lord this began in 40 day fast, but I felt that God has kept impressing. We, we need to pray. I hear the Spirit say, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. I don't know why, but every time we want to close, God says, continue, 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 continue. Something I feel has to break. Some things have to break. And I feel that, that we are waiting for certain something. There's something I feel must happen. And, and, and that's why we put the Friday services. So 5 p.m. we're going to be here. For those of you who love just to pray. There are things that only prayer can deal with. <laughs> things only prayer can deal with. And this is the season for us to seek God like never before. Hallelujah. 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 We, we praise God for all the pastors, ministers, evangelists that are here. Come and let's celebrate them. I see them as well come here for prayers and I want to thank the ministers who come even on Friday. Even on Friday because we need to pray even for our nation. Even for our nation. You, some of you know what is happening. A lot is happening. But revival is here. Revival is here. Our eyes are fixed on what God is saying. Praise the Lord and where the church is going. 
And I'm also going to ask those of you who have opportunities to go on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and all these kinds of things. Avoid posting things that are breaking the body of Christ. You know, avoid using other ministers' voices. Some of you are using our voices to destroy other people, other people's voices, and you're putting them out of context on an already um, disturbed atmosphere. Don't, don't, don't. Somebody got a clip of mine six years ago and used it to, to you know, propagate something that is ungodly. Some of you, and you're born again, stop using things that, you know, that will break the body. We need to be praying more than ever before for the church. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Get a hold of your friend. Heavenly Father, we bless you for the generosity of your people. I pray that you'll supply all their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, today I'm preaching a sermon entitled, How to Guard Your Spirit. How to Guard Your Spirit. How to Guard Your Spirit. Many of us who have been in the faith for quite some time have heard these intimations from wonderful men of God, pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, speaking about this in whatever God has given them. It's not the first time you have heard me emphasize some of these things. But every now and then the Spirit of God will impress words in a season for you or for us as a body of Christ. You know, revelation comes seasonal. Because our God is a God of periods and timetables. And so he will emphasize certain things distinctly because of where we are in the timing of heaven. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. So this is a season more than ever before. Not that it wasn't apparent and important in the time past but I don't think that it has ever made much sense and impression at, as it is in this season to teach people to learn how to guard their hearts, their spirits. Fingerprint readers and face readers. Right now, when you parked your car, if you came driving, that you're Wealth is not stolen. Some of you have very big gates. Big, big gates. Security guards. And some of you have fences as high as prisons. You guard your homes. You guard your bank accounts. You guard everything. But you find that an individual can guard all these things but not guard their spirit. I think you understand how, this, how serious it is. The Bible says, and all of you know, I believe, or some of you know, Proverbs 25 verses 28, He that hath no rule over his own spirit, who cannot guard who is not in charge, who is not protecting, preserving, and guarding his spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. You're guarding everything except your spirit. You cannot rule it. You have no rule over. It can go anywhere. Transact with anything. Spirits were created transactional. That's the primal nature of every spirit. A spirits are transactional entities. Transactional means they are relatable. Are you following what I'm saying? Spirits do not know how to function alone. They have to connect to something. Even the person of the Holy Spirit 
has to connect to you, to something, to some being. Are you following what I'm saying? They don't like functioning without anything or anybody or any element. They, they, they seek a oneness with somebody or something. That is why when an evil spirit, evil spirit is cast out of a person, the Bible says it goes in a dry place, seeking for a place to rest and it will not find. Because it's restless, it's isolated in the desert. It can't live there. If that was their comfortable abode, they would have stayed there. But they don't like that kind of isolation. They just can't stay in one place. The Bible says they walk in dry places. And the Bible says, and then it will find nothing because it's a dry place. It's bound to find nothing. So the Bible says, then it says, I will return to my house. This is the thing that caught me most. That a spirit has been rebuked out of a man. And this spirit is saying, I will return to my house. <laughs> it still lays ownership over where they cast it out. The devil is a possessive being. How many of you understand what I'm saying? The devil is a possessive being. Even when he's cast out of the body, he's still saying, I'll return to my house. You know, we live in a time, and now I'm going to talk to the mature. Here, if you're not yet mature, you'll not understand this. But let me talk to the mature. We live in a time where somebody can come and say, that fellow or that sister, He's a devil worshiper. I know her. And the gullible are quick to believe whatever accusations are made on believers. Recently, there's a man that I honor. He's in his 80s. <laughs> 80s. Thing is a general, great general. He's been serving God all his life. One of the most remarkable people that I know. So recently, I, I saw on, on the internet, some individual was saying, oh, this man of God is a devil worshiper. He goes to hell. He does this and that. And I saw the dear man of God also trying to say, if I'm evil, let, let pray that I die. In my heart, I was like, man of God, why are you even explaining yourself? Don't you see that I would have told you if I had the opportunity to talk to him, I would tell him, look at how beautiful and how big you have revealed God. Don't you think that the devil would want to associate with you? Don't you think that it's natural for the devil to want to own something like what God is doing in your life? Remember the devil has always admired God. Are you following what I'm saying? So anybody that bears the image and the essence of God, he will want to be like or own. Are you following what I'm saying? This is for the mature. So, so it is with what I'm trying to explain. They cast this devil out. It was not created in this individual. But it still says, this is my home. It's like how children think. Huh? Children. You visit somebody and then a child comes and says, put a tool for me, put a tool for me. Then you put a tool on your phone. Now as you're leaving, you hear the kid screaming, my phone. <laughs> and you want to ask this little one, when did you bite? Where did you bite from? My phone. 
It's mine. It's mine. That does fight with my daughter. She was, she possessed something that I know is not hers. I'm convincing her it's not yours. She says, no, daddy, it's mine. She even cried, come down, no, it's mine. So is the devil. He fights for what's not his, as though it's his. So you must understand that some of the things that you cast out of your life, the devil still holds possession in his head of these things. You see what I'm saying? This is important. This, I can say, that your spirit, you, the believer, your spirit, was designed to function a certain way. Every spirit, for example, was designed to have a body. You get it? That's why I say the spirit cannot live isolated. Even when you return to your maker, the Bible says the celestial will take form and take over the terrestrial. But one body will take over the other. Because spirits abide and function in bodies. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, when the Bible says in Romans, if you by the spirit kill the transactions of the body, you will leave. I want to explain something here. As spirits are transactional, so are bodies. Bodies are also transactional. The only way a spirit can live in a body is because by nature the body is transactional as well. When you sit next to a person sneezing, it's you, it's you. And then, the viruses flow in the air and then they enter your body. You inhale them. And then two days later, you're also, it's you, it's you, sneezing. It means your body has transacted. It has entered into transaction with what was in another individual. This is a very fundamental principle in understanding. This whole thing of sickness and how to deal with sickness. This is important. But the Bible says that nothing without a man entering him defileth him. That means your body does not just transact. But the things that come out of him, those are the things that defile him. The meditation of that man's spirit is what defiles him. So the flu in that body is not in your body because your body was meant to catch flu. But because something within you has interpreted what's coming without in corruption. And because it has received it in corruption or breach of a specific law of the spirit, then you catch flu. You understand? In the times where COVID was, Scientists could not explain why some people were asymptomatic. Why some people had no symptoms, yet they carried the virus. 
why some people dwelt with those that carried the virus but did not get it? Why, why other people got it and it killed them? You see what I'm saying? It marveled the scientists. Or genes, or that, or this, or that, or that. But what about siblings who appear to almost have the same genes? And then the two, three years difference. And one is dying and another one doesn't even have it. Or one has no symptoms. The same disease. State of your spirit. State of your spirit. State of your spirit. When you rule over your spirit, your body will not, cannot transact outside what your spirit has refused. Do you understand what I'm saying? But this even goes beyond your body. It goes to almost, no, not almost. It goes to everything that touches your life and existence. It's built, controlled, aligned, compelled by your spirit. You are as rich financially as the state of your spirit. Or at least if you are born in a wealthy family, you can only sustain it according to the strength of your spirit. You are as progressive according to the strength of your spirit. You create, you evolve, you move things according to the state of your spirit. The Bible says in Proverbs, chapter 18, verses 14, if you read the Amplified Version, and I prefer it in the Amplified because it emphasizes what I want to cast light on. He says, the strong this word here, strong. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. He's asking who? It's an open-ended question. It means nobody can help a broken spirit. But he says that the strong spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. There's a man with an incurable disease. But because he has a strong spirit, he will not die. Doesn't matter what is in that body. It bears no consequence on that man's life because his spirit is stronger than the virus running in his body. But there's another man with a disease that is not usually known to kill. But it's going to kill them. It's going to kill them. You have been at funerals and people said, but these are things that are treatable. What happened? Yes, because it's beyond treatment. Am I against what doctors do? No, I'm not against what doctors do. By all means, God has given us doctors an, ex an extension of his healing hand. That a doctor can give you a tablet or an injection that helps the body speed up. But it's not the guarantee if you have not calibrated your spirit to receive your healing. That is why they can give all the treatment in the world and the person still dies or fails to heal in spite of all the treatments because it's important the state of that man's heart, the state of that man's spirit. There's a man who's going to lose their wealth and lose it all. But they have a very strong spirit And as they lost it, they are going to build it tomorrow. And
And those are the kinds who say, this guy almost lost everything, but he has bounced back because his spirit is strong. You must know how to protect your spirit. You must know how to fight with your spirit. You must know how to create with the spirit. Recently, a young man came asking me a question. An honest question. Because I play basketball at least three times a week. So this fellow asked me a question. He said, why is it that most of the time, the team you're playing with wins. Now, some of you think, ah, no, because they guard me as Papa. No, but we have five players on a team. So let's just say they are guarding one individual uh, with soft hands. What about the four I'm playing with? You see, somebody asked me, why is it that your team always wins most of the time? Most of the time. If we're playing 10 games, we can win six, seven. Why is it? He asked me. And was, that was a genuine question. All the guys I play with basketball know that. I'm not boasting. It's the truth. But when we're playing basketball, especially when Pastor Zach is playing on the opposite side, <laughs> we are usually fighting in the spirit. <laughs> so, th there are things we do, me and him, and sometimes these boys don't notice, or some of them notice, you know, and you're probably a few basket, uh, you know, a few points down, and then you start to do something. Then, sometimes I'm doing it, or I'm speaking in a tongue. Sometimes we're down, and then I, I say, we have to win, we have to win. Praka, toki, zele, batako. We are playing basketball. And then sometimes I could sense Pastor Zach looking at me saying, hmm, this guy is praying. He also, uh, <laughs> he also starts, oh, shaka, oh, brade, kata. So, there are two guys on the team. We are fighting spiritually. <laughs> And they're ninjas who are just running with the flesh. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So, he's the only person who disturbs me on the court. In my head, because I know spiritually, when I get on, he's also fighting. <laughs> so, I have to be on guard in my spirit. You know, this might not make sense for some of you. But it's true. It's true. If you sleep a bit, <laughs> they take over, they win. So you have to be in charge of your spirit. You have to tell yourself. And, and this is a lesson I've been telling these boys that so it is with every aspect of life. You must know that your spirit, this spirit God has placed in you, in you can do amazing things. Literally, your spirit can move things, create things, interpret things, translate things. But this is the one thing you don't know how to guard. Everything else on your life is guarded except this one thing. That's fundamentally sits at the core of your existence and essence that defines the course and function of your life. But this is the one thing that believers do not know how to guard. So, I find somebody with financial issues but their spirit is broken. It's breached. It's weak. Proverbs 25, 28. It's without walls. You have no protection over yourself. That if another attack comes, it will take you out. And things are falling apart every day, every day, every day financially for you. And I wish I can tell you, or well, thank God I have the opportunity too, that Everything that is falling apart is as a state of your spirit in that affair. If you learn how not only to build, but keep strong and sustain and under guard your spirit, it's amazing 
how easy you'll break out of trouble. How quick you'll break through those challenges. How easily you'll defeat the things that are disturbing you. I say this once and I'm going to repeat it again because I know some of you were not here, but some of you never got this. Nobody is stronger than you in your realm. Nobody. Every one of us by God has been given this consecrated place from where springs your life, not physical, but spiritual. And the bearing of that reality is preserved by your individual choices. God cannot force you to be born again, can he? Answer me. Can God force you to say, I'm going to force you to become Christian. Even in Genesis 6, he fought and fought with man until the Bible says, for the spirit of God shall not always strife with man. He couldn't fight man forever. The message of the kingdom is for us whoever shall believe on the Lord Jesus, they shall be saved. It's a choice. You can choose to say, I believe in Jesus. You can choose to say, I don't believe in Jesus. He is not going to force you. I have heard people say, God did this and did this until he forced me to enter ministry. Especially people who don't understand the heart of God or who he is. For most of the part when I studied these individuals, it's actually trouble that came their way because of the ignorance they have. And because they were ignorant, then trouble came. They think that it was caused or brought by God to draw them to a place of obedience to serving God. Let me tell you something. God is love. Never forget this. God is love. He just doesn't give or express love. He's not just a lover. He is love. And I've always told us that one of the fundamental principles to help you interpret scripture, always interpret whatever is written in light with God's heart. When you understand the heart of God first, you understand everything else. Some time ago, painfully, and I pray to God to get the grace to share it one day in the full conviction of what I've seen by God. Because it's important to bring some reconciliation. But there's a minister that was teaching that, you know, there's a group of people that were destined for hell. They were created never to receive the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Before the foundation of the world, God determined that these ones will never serve him, submit to him. Now, his impression or intention was to help or make people understand that because God has created certain people to be rebellious to the end, there are some people you should not waste time preaching the gospel to, or that you should accept that this is just who they are until the day they die. As though implying that even though they have free will, there's a boundary around that free will that has in essence programmed their nature not to will for love. Who got it? Let me make it simpler.
your child, even in their most rebellious form, because they came out of you, you look at them and see yourself and you are convicted by natural law that you would give your life for them any day if you found yourself in a place where their life was to be taken except you were to give your own. Do parents understand this? That if somebody put a gun before your child and they were going to shoot, naturally, whether that person is born again or not, they will run to shield their child. Because that's the nature of a parent. I worked in hospitals and I worked in palliative care. And a doctor would walk into the room and tell a, pair, a woman or a man and tell them you're suffering with stage 4 cancer. And the first statement they say, my children. That's the first statement they say. And the biggest percentage of people die speaking those words, my children. It's the last words that leave their mouth before they die, majority of them. Whether the child is wild, that day I saw a boy who murdered a person and the mother was behind the boy weeping, wishing that their child would be acquitted. It's impossible. The boy is in prison, going to prison anyway, but the mother is still walking behind their child because they are on their side. This is a wicked boy who has just murdered a person, but the mother is still on their side, walking behind their child. They're still on the side of their son. Seeking for mercy. If a parent can love their child that much, fallen and wicked as human beings can be, and then you tell me that the creator of heaven and earth created beings in his own image and likeness and said, let me create this thinking like me, talking like me, walking like me, functioning like me, but let me create it for destruction. Then you don't know how God thinks. Or we don't know his heart yet. This God we're talking about is love. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants every man to be born again. All men to be saved. But are all going to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Joe, no. But he will have all men. It's his will to have all men. But he can't go against their will. Nobody is stronger than you in your realm. Now if God, and I want you to listen very keenly here, if God can't force you to receive his Lordship, what makes you think Satan can put on you something you have refused? You got it? The only reason why Satan can put on you something and it destroys you is because it's a stronghold in your spirit, in your mind, sorry. It's a stronghold in your mind. And because you have that stronghold in your mind, it in part provides for the will in your ignorance for the devil to afflict you. Because you think it's possible. That means you let it happen. Do you know how many believers fear Satan more than they fear God? How many people in the world, even in the Christendom, fear the devil more than they fear God. They can do so much to God and before God and do less before the devil because they fear him. Do you know how many people know more about the devil than they do know about God? 
Do you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, this is your Bible. It's not me. It's the scriptures. When a man refuses their spirit to yield, to give in to fear, the Bible says that to the devil it is a sign of perdition. To the devil. It is a guarantee. It's a guarantee of perdition. Amplified Bible, Philippians 1.28. Let me explain it. If a, I'll just give an example. That if a man refuses to fear. Read. One, two, three, go. He says, and do not for a moment, for a moment, be frightened or intimidated by anything. In anything. Now, listen. Anything could mean cancer. Anything could mean bloggers. Anything could mean landlord. Anything could mean dismissal letter. Anything could mean text message separating from you. Anything could mean witchcraft. Anything could mean anything. He says, do not read. For a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. For such, listen, constancy and fearlessness. Underline the word constancy there. I'm coming. For such constancy, if you are constant or consistent in being fearless, he says, will be a clear sign Proof and seal to them, your enemies, of their impending destruction. But a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation. And that, he says, from God. Oh, Rade Bradega. Listen. If they say that you have stage four cancer and you refuse to fear cancer, that is a sign, a clear sign and proof and seal to cancer that it must leave your body. It has ears. Did you get it? But how do you discipline your spirit? To a place where you are constant. You are constantly walking fearless. Because life is a life of fears. Do you get what I'm saying? How did the devil kill all Job's children? And hold his animals and put affliction on him. This is Paul Job saying himself. He says, And the thing that I greatly feared, it has come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. The thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. Job used to look at his children. And fear that they would die. Job look, used to look at his animals and wealth. And fear that he will lose them. He used to look at his body. His skin and say. Hmm, I fear boils. Nobody was stronger than him in his realm. But he invited that sickness and death. In his realm. When Satan goes before God. He only addresses what Job feared. He asks of God. Only where Satan. Sorry Job. Expressed fear. That's where. 
He can touch. But the Bible says he was righteous. He was righteous. That's the difference between iniquity and transgression. Iniquity is immorality, wickedness, and evil deed. That's iniquity. Transgression is the breaking frustration of a certain law, a rule, or a norm. Not all transgressions are iniquity. But all iniquity is transgression. You can live in iniquity, but not you can you can live in transgression. You might live in transgression, but not iniquity. You see what I'm saying? You, you do understand what I'm saying? But transgression and iniquity. In their, in their own selves, depending, no, actually, transgression according to the degree can become or is consequently sin. Iniquity is sin totally. If we say we're meeting at 10 a.m. and then you come at 11, you have transgressed. But I can't say you have sinned. But if you lie to me that you shall come at 10 and then reach at 11, you have sinned, transgressed and sinned. You understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? You remember the scriptures when they talk about Eve? In Timothy, 1 Timothy 2.14, Adam and Eve. The Bible says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. The word there used was an iniquity. The word there used was transgression. She broke the law, a law. You shall eat of every tree in the garden, save of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Surely, she ate. She transgressed. She broke the law God had given That doesn't necessarily mean that Eve was wicked. But she was a transgressor. Are you following what I'm saying? But it took wickedness in Cain to kill Abel. But in this instance, both transgression and iniquity are sin. You get it? In this instance, now, Noah, no, Job had transgressed in a law that God did not regard as sin, but this law worked against Job. Have you regarded my servant who? Job. For there is none like him on the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. Job was not evil, but he transgressed. There's a law he broke. Man was never designed to live in fear, but Job says, the thing that I greatly feared. Before God, God would not say, Job has sinned. He hasn't sinned, but he walked in fear. He broke a law. He transgressed. He was not designed, meant to walk in fear. But the thing which he greatly feared is come upon him. And that which he was afraid of him is come unto him. Why is it that what he feared is what the devil wanted to touch. Because he always knew that this was Job's fear. 
Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? Galatians 2 verses 18. The theme scripture. I'm bringing it almost towards the end. But this is where I was taking you. Galatians chapter 2 verses 18. 1, 2, 3, let's go. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. This Galatians 2.18 here is the fundamental conviction that every believer should carry if you should learn how to guard your spirit. Every believer should understand this. Let me give you an example. And I find that this mostly is prevalent in people who like listening to many preachers who have not yet differentiated the gospel. Am I against listening to many preachers? No. I'm only trying to say some of you have not yet matured to know or understand the full counsel of God. And so you are listening to many ministers, many preachers, and you are mingling your seed or planting your vineyard, the Bible says, with diverse seeds. Deuteronomy 22, verses 9. He says, Thou shalt not sow thine vineyards with thine vineyard with diverse seeds. What will happen if you do? List the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. So we have believers with defiled fruit. They're defiled in their spirit. For example, when I talk about present truth, how many people understand present truth? When I speak to, of the gospel of grace, how many people understand the gospel of grace? There are many pastors or ministers who think when we teach grace, we are telling people sin, sleep around, do everything evil, God died for you, it's saved once, saved once and for all, whatever you do is of no bearing. That's what they think we're teaching. You know why? Because they don't yet understand it. When we talk about faith movement, what do we mean? When we talk about the mystery of the new birth, of the new creation, what do we mean? When we talk about the seed principle, what do we mean? These are fundamental questions every believer should ask and understand them at every level. So you can choose your teachers wisely. Because I have, tell, I, I have come to this understanding and again, I am in no way to stand as some assume or have said that they are custodians of, of doctrine. I'm not a custodian of doctrine. <laughs> I think that's a very... Uh, that, that, that also means something. But, but I, 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 I desist to say more than that. that that's, that's wrong. You can't be a custodian of doctrine. We all know what God has given to us and we can only know as far as we have. So I can also speak in my own estimation, not as one who knows everything, but as one who at least has seen fruit. And by God's grace, I'm able to prove in scripture what I teach. As one whose fruit is not defiled, that many teachers are mixed. Many teachers carry diverse seeds. And
and it takes a maturity because it's easily you can a man can easily be defiled not all some are consecrated that is why i'm very careful when i mention teachers on this altar and those i've mentioned i know why because i study those that are of complete counsel those i can mention here are people i have taken time to study i don't just mention i can recognize graces but to mention certain minister i know what it means because and i'm not trying to scare you I'm, I'm i'm trying to help open your eyes to something i'm not saying all of them are wrong every teacher is wrong or that i'm the right one i could be the wrong one and you know the right one go to that one don't mix but do you understand what i'm saying let me give you an example a simple example for you to understand this if any man be in Christ is a new creature, behold, the old is past and now the new, and all things are become of God, which has reconciled us to himself and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18, 19 tells you that if a man is, is born again, old things are passed away and all things are become new. And he says, and all things are of God. This is the Bible. Then you get born again. You go in a church and the church says, you are born again. But you have some generational curses that we have to break. And then a man or a woman uses their personal experiences of what they went through and because their personal experiences are consonant or in agreement with some fruit that you see in their lives, you think or assume that it's the course for every believer to take. That everyone has to go through what this man went through. So you... Um, you frustrate the grace that is available to you through Christ. You abuse it. I told you one day I'm going to teach about receiving the grace of God in vain. What it means to receive the grace of God in vain. That you, grace is availed to you, but it's not useful. I'll also teach about frustrating grace. Why you can walk in an anointing, have a certain grace on your life, operating on your life, but you frustrate it. It's not functional as it should be. Frustrating the grace of God or receiving it in vain. I'm going to come to that. Now, one day I'll teach about it. But go back here to what I'm trying to tell us in Corinthians. Now, what if somebody is dealing with a demon spirit? Oh yes, people deal with demon spirits. You understand? And I believe in casting them out. But I believe in teaching this person to understand what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18 means. Because if they do, if they do, all things are indeed passed away. And all things are become new. Now if everything has become new, how can I tell you about a generational curse? There are people, I tell you, who are working with generational curses. Not because they are supposed to work with them, but because they have transgressed. They've built again the very things Christ destroyed at the cross. So you think that everybody who is born again really should cross over with a generational curse. I have had men who have preached the gospel in 40, 50, 60 years and a man is telling you when you get born again, you have to go through deliverance. In Fanero, when they get born again, we take them through discipleship class. So, then people say, he is against deliverance. He, I do it every day. Are you following what I'm saying? Did you get it? You go to a conference. There are some of you who watch everything. Because there are people like that. And then they say, a preacher is saying, that 
You are more than a conqueror by Christ Jesus. Then you say, you've built it. You've conquered your business. Right? But, like Mark 11, 23 and 24 says, that if you have faith, listen, listen, Mark 11, 20, 23 and 24. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, now they've built you here by the gospel that you have conquered. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Shall come to pass has put some of these things in the future tense. You have prayed against sickness and if you believe and not doubt in your heart, now you have built healing. That whatever you have asked shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. You shall have it. Shall can be next week. Shall can be next year. Shall can be next month. But the day the preacher preached to you and you are convinced that you were healed, you were healed. Then you go to another conference. And then they say, you could be here and family demons are kidding you. And you are sick. And the same person says, Pastor, it is what? True. If you build again, the thing that you destroyed, you have broken a fundamental law. You have made yourself a transgressor. How have you done it? You have sowed your vineyard, which is the heart, with diverse seed. It's in your songs. I see the Lord. This is you singing. I see my Jesus. So said I. People say, wow, for the worship for the people of the earth. And people are saying, eh, she's seeing God. After that song, as it ends, you hear a person saying, Hariwa Yesu Ariwa, Jagala Mulabe, Yesuange. Now, those of you who are watching, if you don't know what that song means, that song means, Where is Jesus? I want to see him. They were singing, They see God. In a few minutes, they want to see him. Are you following what I'm saying? He lives in me. Hey, he lives in me. Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, he lives in me. Pass me not. O gentle Savior. He, and people are standing up. Mm, mm, mm. My humble cry. Why, oh love, is thou a call Now there's a sister feeling the spirit, not pass me by. <laughs> oh, Savior. Oh, Savior. You see somebody kneeling down. Who got it? 
You were saying he's inside you. Few minutes you don't want him to bypass you. So Jesus is here. You're singing, he is within me. And Jesus is like, mm. <laughs> he's in me. And then, past. Jesus stands like this. <laughs> You're confusing your spirit. Some of you, it's your prayer life. I'm a Nico. I'm not a chicken. I'm a Nico. I'm not a chicken. I'm a Nico. I'm not a chicken. Sitting coco, dimpungu. Sitting coco, dimpungu. And then you ask yourself, who told you you were a chicken? They sing it. I am a child of God. Hey, I am a child of God. Then the preacher says, now take some time and just thank God for today. Express your heart toward him. And the, the song is, I'm a child of God. And the person says, Father, I am filthy rags. I am empty. I am a dustbin. I am... I'm a rug of a house, I am nothing, I am a tree, I am idol, I am empty, I am. Because Shashiro Goyamba. Child of God, you liken yourself to a dump stand. Pastor says, tell your neighbor, I am rich. You touch your people, I'm rich. You go just down there. Somebody says, man, Alex, eh? I need some transport. <laughs> I'm poor these days. <laughs> Look for something else to say. Tell them, sorry, I didn't come with enough money. My money is at the bank and the ATM is, say something. But don't transgress. You see me here. I'm about to die. <laughs> Direct translation. I'm about to die. Then you ask them, what is killing you? Poverty. <laughs> Then they, they were in overnight last night and they were screaming, I am rich! I am rich! I am rich. If you build again the things which you destroyed, you have broken a certain law. By heaven you have not sinned. You have just set yourself <laughs> against success. Because see, if you fail and you die, you'll go to heaven. Because God loves poor men as he loves rich people. You understand what I'm saying? If you die early, you'll go quicker. Heaven is better than earth. Heaven won't say, why did you declare death on yourself? Ah, the moment you die early, the angels will be welcoming you. <laughs> But it's transgression. You've broken a law. A fundamental rule in the spirit. Guard your spirit. In guarding your spirit, be very careful what you confess. Be very careful what you hear. And be very careful how you think. If your thought process is right, your confession is right, and you have the right teachers, 
your garden. There are things my wife knows. You can ask her. Sometimes somebody can start narrating a story. Do you know what happened to these people? Then they start negative. And I said, please. I don't want to hear. She knows sometimes I tell her, ah, fast forward, let's go to the point. I don't want to hear certain things because I don't want to disturb my spirit. I don't want to breach. I don't want to transgress because you can hear things that can make you lose sleep. Some of you doctors have killed people before they died. Your mouths are full of transgression. Medical doctors, you kill people. Eh, hey, hey, you are gone. <laughs> yeah. Give somebody hope and tell him believe God. Yes, this is terminal, but there's always a but. Because for everything you hear have had, have, has killed somebody, there's a man on earth who defeated it. Am I, am I speaking the truth? There's a man who fell from a 10th floor building and they survived. One fell from a 4th and died. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why don't you be among those who survive? I don't think poor. Even if money is not available in the account, I don't think I can't build the thing I destroyed. I destroyed poverty once and for all. I don't think I am sick. My body might feel things, but I don't think that I'm sick. Things might become, but I don't believe because I destroyed sickness out of my body. I don't think I can fail. Now there's a transgressor saying, mm -hmm. even you, mm -hmm. Kalabi, even you, Kalabi. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. We have the show of the prophecy. The word we have is sure. If he said I can't fail, I can't fail. You will produce fruit undefiled. Your fruit will be because this show word of prophecy, the Bible says, is as a light that shines in darkness or in a dark place. That is the only, when you say, I can't fail, that means you've put light in a dark place. Now, can you light a light in a dark place and darkness says, mm -hmm, I'm staying dark. It is the light that shineth in a dark place until the dead dawn. Until the circumstances change and the day star rise in your heart, the fruit of your faith is manifested. That's what it means. People like that, it, that you can never convince them. Let me tell you. There was a day I studied divine healing and there was a day I remember, I knew it was the last time I would fall sick. You understand? And from that time, nothing has ever come in my body that has convinced me I'm sick. That's the truth. The deepest core there knows I don't fall sick. You get my point? Do you understand what I'm saying? When you do that, that's the light that shines in a dark place. Your body must agree. Some of you, it's 10, 15, 13 years. You've never been admitted. It's not good genes. There's something you're telling yourself every day. Glory to God. 
the comes, it's only for a night. The next day you're jumping. You don't allow it to drown you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you have had financial issues, but yes, your children are still going to school. Somehow, you still eat food. Somehow, even when it's hard, fuel still appears in that car. Don't take that lightly. That means you've been building yourself <laughs> for so many years. That is why I tell people, when you understand this principle, there are people you just don't wake up and you're going to break because you're going to have to undo the law they have set in motion for 10, 20, 30 years. And you can't because yours just started last week. You're late. Do you understand what I'm saying? A witch doctor can't come right now and bewitch me. Because I've set many laws in motion over the years. I know what Christ did at the cross at Calvary. Show what? Prophecy. If he says greater is he who is in me than he. You know, recently I was hearing a preacher say, if a devil worshiper spends a whole night on an altar, sending incantations on your name, you equally are supposed to spend a whole night. I said, eh. I thought by the time this man comes in the fight, I've already defeated it by Christ. Do you understand? What are they going to tell the Smith Wigglesworths? Who saw devils and they woke up and went back to sleep? And the devil couldn't touch them. Because they had built some ranks in the spirit. They had set certain laws in motion. It happened to me. When Tanzania one day, Bukoba preaching the gospel. These Tanzanians have witchcraft like I can't tell you. So, a demon comes and it strangles one man of God. <laughs> it gets another one. <laughs> The struggle, the first one, the second. So I wake up. I sense things are happening in the room I don't understand. When I wake up like this, I'm walking up to a snake. It was big in the spirit. I could see it was big like this. And I, because I had never seen anything like that in my spirit, believe me, I woke up. When I woke up, the vision stayed. My people on the ground, they are... I see this snake like this. And because I've never seen it, I stood up like this on the wall. And these two guys are gasping. And then a word dropped in my spirit. Do you know who you are? Do you know that greater is he? I'm seeing the serpent there. That is in you than he which is in the world. The Lord is my witness. I looked at this thing and I was like. And I went back. The next day, we are having breakfast. One of our friends starts, Mani, <laughs> something strangled me last night. Then the guy next to me said, Man, me too. <laughs> so I said, what was this thing killing two people? That could not kill me. Simple. I had the right seed. Kenneth Hagin taught me much. It was the first book I read. It's called The Believer's Authority. That one I recommend every believer to read it. It's called The Believer's Authority. I knew no devil can strangle me. Glory to God. Ye have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you. Listen, he has said, little children, ye have overcome them. This one is saying, pray the whole night. Because the other one is praying the whole night. John is saying, you have overcome them. Because greater is he which is in you than he than me, that is in the world. Tell your neighbor, choose your seed. Let's get to our feet. Choose your seed. <laughs> Salawo!
Pata cobra de gazanda la pati. I say choose your words. If you think you're poor, you're poor. If you think they are going to fire you, you are fired. If you think your marriage is not going to work, it has died. Hey, come on, raise your voice and speak to Jesus. You will be changed. Hey. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Now, as we are praying, I want us to take three minutes, four minutes actual of speaking in tongues. Four minutes of speaking in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, receive them. Somebody say, I can't. You've broken. Receive them. If you're there and you've never given your life to Christ, as we are praying, I want to give you an opportunity to come here and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, wherever you are. If you're there and you say, Pastor, I'm not born again. I want Jesus. I want to receive him as my Lord and Savior. Come right now and I pray with you. Wherever you are, today is the day. Consecrate yourself and enter a personal relationship with God. The rest of us, let us just take a few minutes and pray. Let us hold these words that we received this afternoon. Spirit takes over your soul. Those of you who want to be born again, come. The rest of us, speak, speak. These four minutes are going to change so much. Repent where you have broken the things you built or built the things you broke. This is the time to say, Father, I'm sorry. I confessed this when I was not supposed to confess it. I believed something I was not supposed to believe. I yielded to rumors I was not supposed to yield to. I listened to my body instead of listening to your words. Your soul. When the Spirit takes over. Pastors, build your ministry now.
Barra Bradiga Surapa Zora Prande Gosigara Palate Cobradiga Remba Zombre Ketele Paya de Nogo Shikara Sharanaba One more minute to go Zombre Ketele Patalapa Kebra de Gazombre Ketele Pa Come on, build, 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 build. Shut up, shut up. I see big, I see big, I see big. these ones then I'll pray for you those of you who are here just say these words from your heart say Lord Jesus I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory today I give you my heart as one who died that I would receive glory change me Transform me. Deliver me. Use me. Amen. Put up your hand. Heavenly Father, I bless you. I speak an anointing over these ones. Freedom, liberty, deliverance, peace. Sickness is far from you. Struggle and strife are not your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Witchcraft loses its hold today. It has no power over you. Go! You have no power over them. Struggle and strife are no more. Untimely death. Leave her in the name of Jesus. Go! Go! You're free in the name of Jesus. You're free in the name of Jesus. You're free. God is going to change your life for good. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to ask for only two minutes of your time. I'm going to take your names and phone numbers. The chair is there. You're going to sit there only for two minutes. Take your names and phone numbers. I want to take to pray for you, okay? And then one more gift you can do yourself. Or else keep coming to church. We have services 9 to 11 on Sunday and 11 to 1. Best gift you can give yourselves in the name of Jesus. For the rest of us, put up your right hand. I decree and I declare, you are doing big. You are doing great. You are progressive. You are advantaged. You are increasing. 
supernatural speed, momentum they are yours, divine health is yours, your star shines bright, in the name of Jesus, promotion is yours, in the name of Jesus, you are going far, hallelujah, glory to God, nothing can stop you, nothing can slow you, you will not fail, you don't fail, it's not your nature, it's not your portion, in the mighty name of Jesus, testimony upon testimony, is coming upon your life your family is blessed your name is blessed the glory of god on your life is unexplainable in jesus name come on celebrate jesus see you i love you This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, please visit our website at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app to stay up to date with all the ministry programs. The Fenero app is available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. Join our online family, spread the love and follow us on Instagram, Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Fenero, make manifest.